Hey everybody, I'm Sydney. Welcome to C3 Kids Church Online. I'm coming to you from Community Christian Church in White Marsh, Maryland, where we are all about helping people find their way back to God. C3 Kids Online is the place for kindergartners through third graders to learn all about Jesus and how much He loves us. This month, we're learning about the life app of compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's needs. You can show compassion by caring for the people on your block, the people in your neighborhood. Now, maybe your neighborhood looks like this. Or this. Or this. Or maybe your neighborhood looks different from any of those. Really, your neighborhood just means the people around you, whether you see them at home, school, the park, anywhere. We can show compassion to our neighbors by caring enough to show love and kindness. We can see what people need and do something about it. Speaking of neighborhoods, I thought we'd play a game that has to do with things you might find in a neighborhood. I'll give you three clues and you can see if you can guess what I'm thinking about. Cool? Okay, let's play. Round one, here we go. I'm thinking of something that is usually found on the sidewalk. Most of the time this is red, but sometimes they're yellow. This has water come out of it. Did you guess? If you guessed a fire hydrant, you got it. Okay, round two. I'm thinking of something that has a lot of grass. Sometimes it has a playground. Most of these have walking or biking trails. Did you get it? I was thinking of the neighborhood park. Okay, one more. You see these lining the streets. They're up very high above our heads. They give off light. Did you guess a lamppost? That's what it was. Good job, guys. Okay, well that was fun, but we're just getting started. Now it's time to sing a worship song together. We sing worship songs to help us think about how awesome God is, and also as a way for us to tell Him how much we love Him. And today's song is a new song for us called Love One Another. So let's stand up and sing this song together. What an awesome song and an awesome reminder to love one another the way God loves us. This month, we'll see lots of amazing ways that Jesus showed compassion. And in today's story, we'll learn about a time when He let people know exactly who He was and how He came to help everyone. Let's check it out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history 
Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 30. Even though Jesus was on this earth for 33 years, there's still not much we know about his first 30 years. We do know that he visited Jerusalem for the Passover feast with his parents. He learned carpentry skills from his father, Joseph. And when he was about 30, he went down to the Jordan River and asked his cousin, John, to baptize him in the water. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus rose from the water, God's voice called out from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. It was an incredible way for Jesus to begin his ministry. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Spirit of God. Anytime he visited a new town, he went to the place of worship, the synagogue, to teach the people. You are the light of the world. Isn't he just the bee's knees? Everywhere Jesus went, people were amazed and praised his teaching. That is, until he got to Nazareth, the town where he had grown up. Well, if it isn't Carpenter Boy Jesus. Hey man, where you been? We hear you talk real big now. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went into the synagogue. An attendant handed him a rolled papyrus. The scroll of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived hundreds of years before Jesus, and God had spoken to Isaiah about a Messiah who had come to rescue God's people, and Isaiah had written down every word. Watch that papyrus as you unroll it, a bit crackly. Jesus stood before the crowd of worshipers and unrolled the scroll until he came to the right place. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to announce the good news to poor people. He has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners. He has sent me so that the blind will see again. He wants me to set free those who are treated badly. And he has sent me to announce the year when he will set his people free. There was silence as Jesus rolled up the scroll and sat back down. Everyone stared. Today, this passage of scripture is coming true as you listen. Jesus hadn't just read some dry, dusty, ancient words. Jesus had declared that he was God's Messiah, that he was there to announce good news and bring freedom to the poor, the hurting, and those who had been mistreated. But well, he's Joseph's son, isn't he? He can't be the Messiah. What I'm about to tell you is true. A prophet is not accepted in his hometown. Mm. Words are easy. He calls himself a prophet? I studied with him on those benches right over there. Thinks he's something special because he can read a scroll. All around the synagogue, people rose to their feet, glaring. They turned on Jesus. You are not welcome here anymore. That's right. We don't need you making things up. The people were so angry they forced Jesus out of the synagogue. He allowed them to herd him straight through the village all the way to a cliff on the edge of town. Get rid of him! Throw him down! But Jesus simply turned and looked at the people, sorrow in his eyes. The men and women that he'd known and loved growing up wouldn't accept who he was. The crowd couldn't face Jesus. In their anger, they had missed the whole point that Jesus had come to make things right for those who were hurting and overlooked. Jesus walked right through the crowd, away from the cliff edge. They parted to let him go through. Then he left Nazareth and went on to Capernaum where he continued to carry out his mission. What a story. Jesus loves us so much. He loves each and every person. In fact, he gave us the very best example of compassion. That day in Nazareth, Jesus was announcing what he came to do. He came to care for the people and bring them hope, healing, and freedom. And eventually, Jesus did something about what all of us need, most of all. He died on the cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. That's how much compassion he has. That's how much he cares for us. 
So if we want to follow Jesus, then things that are important to Jesus will be important to us too. Jesus showed compassion and so should we. And that leads us to our bottom line today. Following Jesus means caring about others. That can mean you draw a picture or write a note to encourage someone who's sick. Or maybe you take time to listen and be a friend to someone who's sad or lonely. That's compassion. That's how you care for people like Jesus did. That, to help you discover more about that, we have some resources linked in the description of this video. So check them out and be sure to come back next week for another episode of See Through Kids Online. See you then. Bye.